What up and welcome back for another Malazan Book of the Fallen video. This week we're talking about everybody's favorite shave knuckle in the hole. It's the man himself, Quick Ben. Let's get into it. Today we're here trying to come up with an answer or at least get some speculation going for that age old question, who the f is Quick Ben? So I wanted to make this video because last week I put out my video on my favorite characters. Uh, you can watch that somewhere up there. But uh, he wasn't on it and I got a lot of comments about that but I had always planned to do a Quick Ben standalone video. I should definitely preface this video and maybe I should preface all videos by saying that I am definitely not a Malazan expert. I screw up the pronunciations, the books, the facts, etc. I'm just a total fan and so if I get something wrong let me know but we're just doing this for fun because it's such an awesome series. The dude is just like a straight up onion, right? There's so many layers and as you get further and further into the books, you just find out that there's even more depth and layers to the character. So even though he didn't make my top 10 list, he's definitely one of like the most dynamic and, and crazy characters in the entire series. So I'm gonna do the first half, hopefully spoiler free, and just talk about like what we know at the beginning, what we learn a little bit over time, and then about halfway through or so, I'll give you the heads up for the spoilers so those of you who haven't finished yet can jump out of here. And then we'll get into the kind of speculation about who Quick Ben actually is and, uh, and just talk about some of his major achievements over the series. So starting off Gardens of the Moon, all we really know is that Quick Ben is this like G'd up mage, squad mage, ninth squad, bridge burners, and he's under the command of Whiskey Jack. He's described as like bald, dark skin. He has like super long fingers. I don't know why they're always talking about his hands and his fingers, but you get the impression that he's a pretty skinny dude. He wears like leather pants with a little, uh, you know, jerkin and then some kind of leather armor on top of that. Doesn't do much actual hand-to-hand -hand fighting though. There's a lot of really cool Quick Ben art, so I'll steal some of that from online and just kind of flash it up. In general, the series has a ton of awesome art, but specifically Quick Ben is just such a crowd favorite out there that uh, there's some really good ones for Quick Ben. His whole name is actually like Ben Adefon Delot, and I know that I'm butchering that and I'll probably butcher all the names throughout. That's actually one of my favorite sources of comments is people correcting my pronunciation, so keep that coming down below. We find find out pretty early on in Gardens of the Moon that he is just a ridiculously powerful maid. When Tattersail shows up, he's using Curald Gallane, uh, which is elder magic, and she was really shocked that somebody's out there using that. And again, not only is it elder magic, but just the, sh you know, the shifting of his soul into that thing. People haven't seen that done in so long, and so it just was a, a really kind of tone setting event where we find out that Quick Ben's actually a serious badass when it comes to majory. He does a lot of crazy stuff throughout all of the books, but even just early on, right? He's uh, making deals with Shadow. He knows the Hounds of Shadow by name. He goes head to head with some Tistandi mages and assassins, and that's pretty gnarly. And he's actually going into some pretty serious combat at the FET at the end of Gardens of the Moon too. So there's just a, you know, a whole series of events through even just the first book where you're seeing like Quick Ben is really kind of in the mix of everything that's going on. So as things go on, you kind of find out more about his background. One of the interesting things about him is that he like has absorbed the entire mage cabal from the original Seven Cities. Actually, the Bridge Burners and Whiskey Jack were sent over to the Seven Cities to conquer it with the Bridge Burners and they end up trying to take down this mage cabal of which Quick Ben is one of the, the kind of high mages sitting on that cabal. So all the mages from the Seven Cities Cabal kind of take off through the desert to Raraku. Raruku? I know. Um, and, and Callum actually gets embedded with the bridge burners and is supposedly, you know, out there helping him track down this mage cabal. Well, as time goes on, they keep finding bodies 
of, you know, these 12 members of the mage cabal dropping one by one. And as it turns out, Quick Ben basically absorbed the souls of all the other mages. And that's why he's able to touch so many different Warrens throughout the books, but a whole range of people who he basically takes over. We also find out fairly early on that he used to be the high priest of shadow as well right and that's why he's got all this beef with Amonis and Gotillion and so he's got this kind of really deep history um, with all this kind of sketchy secret stuff going on in his past we also find out quick ben's just like the third smartest man alive right whiskey jack and others talk about either croup or iskaral pust being the smartest people in the entire world quick ben is up there really running neck and neck with both of those guys. So that's kind of like what we know at the beginning, which is, you know, as if that wasn't enough. He's already got like a lot of sh crazy shenanigans and layers going on there. And this, I guess, is where the spoiler stuff starts to kick in. So if you want to take off, um, read up through the rest of the books, come back and watch the rest of the speculation about Quick Ben. <laughs> There's a lot of speculation, especially if you make it all the way through the books and then go back to um, the Carcanus trilogy. As you get into like Reaper's Gale and Memories of Ice, there's just a lot of things that lead you to believe that even that crazy complicated history uh, isn't all there is to the story. So first bit of speculation or confusion, and I'm looking to you guys to give me some love down in the comments and let me know what's up. But when Quick Ben goes to the spar of Andy, he gets the, the scepter of darkness. He's talking to mother as if it was kind of like his mother. And so there's some kind of like Tis Andy connection there. But either he himself or one of the, like the 12 souls that he took over have some kind of a connection to uh, Mother Dark and the Tistandi because that was like a very intimate discussion talking about mother and being one of the children etc. He also talks a lot about father and I'm really curious to know who do you think that father is tell me down below I'm dying to know who you think could it be you know, Draconis, that's one of the other bits of speculation. If you go online into the forums or on Reddit, then you hear people floating out the idea that he's Aranthan, kind of the, you know, Draconis's son with some unknown mother who went and stayed with Hout and saw Hood, you know, wage war on death and then has somehow lived through all the centuries and now is Quick Ben. I'm not totally sold on that one myself, personally. I think that, I, I think I know who Aranthan becomes later in the books and maybe that's good for another video. Let me know if you have a guess down below. But there's definitely some kind of a Tistandy connection. And so I wanna know, like, is it him? that's directly kind of a, a Tistandi himself, or is it one of the 12 souls that he took over? And who's the father, right? Because he talks about father uh, underestimating, etc. and there's a whole big intimate discussion. What's going on there? <laughs> the other crazy thing about Quick Ben is that it's hinted at in many different places that he could be like a soul taken Deavers, right? People are always making comments. I think like it was uh hedge who was making comments about him being soul taken people always talk about how it smells like a soul taken just showed up with this kind of like um you know spicy scent whenever quick ben shows up i know one of the seven cities mages that he absorbs very early on in the series ulan was like a high priestess and a soul taken of solil and so is that just a function of having absorbed her that now he has this kind of soul taken ability? What are the other clues out there? Because I know there's a bunch, but uh, that's just like another layer and we never really see him use it, but maybe he was using it in the background. It's just kind of like another level of badassery that he kind of has in his back pocket in addition to being able to access like 12 different Warrens and all of the other things that he's actually able to do over time. The other reason why we might think he's like soul taken as well is because we find out way later on, right, that he actually used to outrank Tay Shren and was part of the Malazan military as a guy named Kribala Rule or Rule the Rude, who actually saved Tay Shren's ass at one point in the Black Dog Forest. And that's how 
Quick Ben actually got that uh, demon that he uses to take down some of those Tistandi mages in Darugistan back in Gardens of the Moon. So he obviously looked way different. Nobody recognized him as Quick Ben. So he obviously has that ability to change shapes. I think Amanus also calls him like a, a shape-shifting bastard or something like that. And so uh, is that just part of like the Soul Taken stuff that he got from Ulan? Or what's going on with that? The other thing that links him to High House Dark is when Fiddler does that reading. I think it's in memories of ice or the chain god but uh where he actually calls him out as the magus of high house dark and so that's just another connection but i think where all of it comes together and let me know if i'm way off base is that especially after you read those quotes from steven erickson that are floating around out there that talk about how quick ben gets introduced in forge of darkness and we don't recognize him there's no Quick Ben in there, but the person who is in there is a uh, Mybe named Coria Delath. Delath. Delat. Uh, seems very close to me. The other thing is Coria is a Mybe who is designed to uh, accept souls or have souls basically embedded within her. And so for me, that seems like a much more natural fit than quick ben being a ranthan but then again it it's still a, a leap so was he was coria one of the 12 souls that he absorbs into himself and so that's what gave him the ability did she kind of shape shift into quick ben i don't have all the dots connected because quick ben still had you know a sister who wrote him off and she remembers him as a kid as a kid, Quick Ben, right? Like a young Quick Ben. It wasn't a young uh, Coria Delath who, you know, soul shifted into Quick Ben or so. I'm not totally clear how all that works, but it definitely seems like as the Maibi with the connection, she was obviously a Tistandi slave to Hout uh, who turned her into a Maibi, right? And so maybe that explains this kind of connection to mother dark to the magus of of high house dark because of that kind of tist andy lineage but i think the thing that i'm i'm curious to know is how do we get from coria to quick ben if you even buy this kind of theory so yeah for my money i put it all on quick ben equals Coria Delath, but I'm just still foggy on how we get from kind of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years in the past to Quick Ben as a child, but still being Coria. So not totally clear. I'm looking forward to finding out what you guys think about that. But I think for me, regardless of who Quick Ben is, it's fun just to run through like a list of some of his accomplishments because what he does from Gardens of the Moon all the way through the Chain God is pretty ridiculous. So we already talked about Hairlock, right? And busting out like old magic that people haven't seen in hundreds of thousands of years, soul shifting him into a puppet. That's pretty gnarly. He also makes the container that Coltane wears around his neck so that when he dies, his soul actually went into that container. And presumably, you know, when young Coltane comes around in the future, right, we'll, we'll be able to thank Quick Ben basically for making that mechanism that was going to bring him back and having that foresight to know like how important he is and just what a G Coltane is. So if you're a Coltane fan, right, then you're a Quick Ben fan because uh, he basically is the one responsible for, for keeping that story going into the future. And who doesn't love Coltane? Come on. Through all his escapades and the Warrens and stuff, he actually stumbles into the, the crippled gods uh, realm, right? And has this conversation, totally shuns him and just kind of chunks the deuces at him. But then at the same time, he actually ends up, you know, helping to free the, the crippled god and to hopefully heal, burn, and do all that stuff. And so uh, just a really deep, complex character. He's not like afraid of the gods, but he acts on what he thinks is is kind of the best course of action. So he'll do stuff like give the bird to the crippled god, but then actually end up working to free him. Pretty cool. <laughs> His whole storyline with the Bargast, right? And he frees Talmandes, um, gets access to some of that Bargast magic gets those bargas into Dujek's army and that was like a huge deciding factor in Kapustan he like actually frees Talmanes from 
Hood's realm, and he was like totally, you know, the little stick snares like did not think that was possible. And so just, you know, time and again, he's doing the impossible and just like freaking people out by doing things that nobody knew could be done. He ultimately becomes high mage of Dujak's host, which is pretty cool to see him kind of get that reward or get that recognition. He takes down Camist and Corbolo Dom, which is really gratifying to see. And again, just like kind of goes in and straight up annihilates Camist um, and then knocks Corbolo Dom out in just the, the most epic quick bend way, right? Shows up at the last minute, takes him down to Crowny Town, and that's the end of the story. In that invasion of Lether, he's like on the ship and there's hundreds of Tist E. Dur sending crazy majory at him. And he like, with the aerosol, obviously, but he's able to like, raise that wall of fire and just straight up withstand like hundreds of gnarly Eder mages. When Troll Senegar is out there defending the throne of Shadow, Quick Ben shows up and actually takes on Ikarium and is able to like hold him off for a little bit of time, which is pretty insane given who Ikarium is and can just straight up destroy entire worlds. When they're trying to free the chain god at the end, right? Quick Ben shows up and takes down like wave after wave of those Kachain short tails, the Naruks, right? And before he disappears, he was just like straight up wreaking havoc on those things which were actually taken down like the entire army and yeah ultimately just like is ridiculously pivotal in the entire series including and up to uh, actually freeing the chain god and pretty much every other like major event in the series quick ben has his fingers in that pie or was like pulling strings in the background so uh yeah quick ben Again, it's just like layer after layer. So yeah, moral of the story, I guess the answer is that we really don't know who the f Quick Ben is. Again, my money is on Coria Delath, but I'm not sure how we get there, and I definitely am not 100% on that, and so looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Let me know what are your favorite like Quick Ben moments. I went through a, just kind of like a quick list, but he's done so much stuff, I'm, I'm really, interested to to kind of reminisce about all the crazy quick Ben slash Callum times and we didn't even spend a lot of time talking about Callum but you really can't talk about quick Ben without talking about Callum and so uh, we'll save that for the best friends video which will be coming up here soon but for this one we're gonna go ahead and leave it there so thank you so much for watching these videos are a lot of fun I think next I'm gonna get back to my Gardens of the Moon series and we'll finish that off so that we can keep rolling through the rest of the books but we'll be mixing in fun ones like this over time so if you like the video make sure to give us a thumbs up so that the YouTube gods will promote this video for us and we get more Malazan fans into the channel and reading those books make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you never miss a video and uh, until then happy reading.